this panel will be available for a future recording um, or for future viewing on our YouTube channel. Wow, I am out to lunch today, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Woo, okay. Without further ado, and I'm sure everyone's grateful that it's the time, I will hand uh, this conversation over to our moderator and the brains behind this offering today, Laura Thomas. Take it away, Laura. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Thomas. I'm in Austin, Texas. I'm a booking agent, um, Combo Plate Booking. I'm also on the board of directors at Folk Alliance International, and I sit on a committee called the Advocacy Committee, and I chair a subcommittee <laughs> called the Health Subcommittee. And so I am um, here in that capacity and wanted to just, well, thank you all for being here. We um, decided to do, to support the staff and creating some special programming for Mental Health Awareness Month, which is the month of May here in the US. So we kind of brainstormed and every Thursday there is a webinar or a meeting being hosted by Folk Alliance. And so this is our second meeting of that offering. And so today's topic, as Tressa mentioned, it's um, what is folk life balance? And so brief history, those words, our committee created those, that term, I think it was actually a communication team at the Folk Alliance office created that. And we kind of launched it and tried to make it a hashtag a couple years ago and focusing on self-care and work-life balance for our community. So we wanted to give it a special attention for this Mental Health Awareness Month. And um, so we can dive in a little bit further. So today's topic is work-life balance for our community, self-care, and how do we take care of our emotional, physical, and spiritual selves, our mind, body, and soul. Our community has a lot of issues that we don't always talk about. And so we wanted to have this conversation so people don't have to feel alone when we're talking about mental health and wellness. A lot of, a few of the issues that our community is sort of prone to is depression and anxiety, substance use, fatigue and poor diets, relationship strain, sleep issue, fatigue from long hours and financial stability. So those are kind of the stressors. As we all know, there's a lot of beautiful things in our community too, but today we're gonna kind of check in on those issues. And the way it's gonna work is that we have three expert panelists and um, I'll be introducing each of them individually. And we will, we had questions that were already submitted. So we'll be asking our panelists to answer those questions and feel free to also give your thoughts and advice in the chat. And that way we can all learn from each other. So I think with, you know, our goal is just to have everyone feel inspired in their own self-care and to work on their own work-life balance. So I am going to introduce everybody. So the first person I'm going to introduce is um, Chioma Moronu. And I chose her, I am a social worker, a licensed social worker, but I don't practice, but I do attend continuing education trainings. And I um, attended a training that Chioma did last October. It was about racial trauma and microaggressions. And I was really impressed with her. And I started following her on her Instagram handle. And I really like her practice of Approach because it's all about mind, body, and soul. So I'll let her tell you a little bit more about herself. Welcome, Chioma. Thanks, Laura. Hi, all. Um, so I'm Chioma Moronu. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I am a licensed clinical social worker, as Laura mentioned, I'm a registered yoga teacher, and I am a obsessed plant mom, if you can tell by the plants behind me. <laughs> also mom of chickens, dogs, fish, and actual humans as well. Um, so I am currently in private practice as well as I am a program director for a nonprofit that works with youth and trying to keep them out of psychiatric placements and juvenile detention centers. So trying to keep kids out of institutionalized settings and in their homes and in their communities. Um, so I was super excited when Laura called me because my whole thing is about creating life in which you don't have to take a break from. I think it's so important to like create a life where you don't have to say, oh my gosh, I can't wait till my next vacation. 
because we're into implementing things in our daily life that helps us be able to do the things we love and enjoy the people we love, even with the stresses that come along with life. So that is a little bit about me and we'll talk more about self-care and those things as we continue. Thank you, Chioma. I'm so happy you were able to be a part of our folk family here. The next person I wanna introduce is um, Darlene Starr. She's from here in Austin, but we had never met, but she's a, an herbalist and a nutritionist who works with musicians and creatives. So I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit more. Welcome, Darlene. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, as, as, uh, as Laura was just saying, I, uh, I am in private practice as uh, an herbalist uh, and I kind of work as a holistic health coach, I guess is probably the overarching theme, but prim uh, my primary, primary modalities are herbalism and nutritional therapy. So utilizing food uh, as supportive medicine. Um, and, uh, you know, I came to this path by way of the music industry. I, I was in the music industry for 25 years about, um, in various capacities from promotion, artist development, marketing, that sort of stuff. And, and, um, you know, but, but had always had this interest. I was always kind of the band mom that showed up at the bus with, you know, the bag full of whatever, cause someone, you know, was losing their voice or had a cold or, you know, whatever was going on um, at the time. And, um, and also saw a lot of my friends and, um, and loved ones self-destruct over the years. And so when, uh, when I, you know, I also serve on, on the board of the Sims Foundation here in Austin, which we serve, um, we provide services for mental health and recovery from substance uh, for musicians, music industry professionals and their family members. So this is a passion that I've always had. Um, it, you know, when I created my company, I just wanted to bring it all together um, and be able to, to serve this community that I love so much um, from a cultural competency of having kind of lived on the road myself. And so, you know, with that understanding that people very often get advice they can't utilize, you know, in, in how they're living. Um, but I work with, I work, uh, with individuals and also teams, um, as well. So, you know, bands or management companies or whatever the case, whatever the dynamic might be where people are working in the industry, um, just to create things that are very personal for them, because, um, I'm a firm believer that there is not a one size fits all path to wellness, um, to herbalism, to nutrition, to any of those things, because each person and each person's body is different. So um, I try to be collaborative with, with everyone to create things that work for them. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to, to, to chatting and um, I'll jump off now. Uh, All right. Um, thank you, Darlene, for being here. And our last guest, I just explained, I put out like feelers and that's how a friend another music friend uh recommended Darlene and then I put out a feeler I was looking for an artist who um has who has worked on their folk life balance and so that's Natalia Zuckerman so welcome Natalia thank you it's so great to be here I just my own mental health feels like my whole system has just calmed down being in in community so thank you for this and uh Chioma, I just want to, like, I, I so appreciate that your your actual human children came last in your list of what you tend to. And um, Darlene, I, I, you can be my band mama anytime. I feel like on the road, often I take that on that role, but that's just because I'm codependent. Um, but as a touring musician, I, I, I actually, I take a lot of pride in, in friends I've toured with in the past that say they like touring with me because they always know they're going to have some healthy practices on the road and it's just I'm a grew up with musician parents so I've just never known anything else like it doesn't I don't, I don't know what it means to to not play music and be uh, creative in the world um it's all I've seen and all I've done so um but my also spiritual and physical mental health is um extremely important to me as somebody as as Laura was saying you know I fall prey to all of the things she mentioned, um, depression, anxiety, um, substance abuse. I haven't really struggled with, thank God. Um, but I get it. And I've been around a lot of that. So, um, the wellness practices I've, 
I've garnered just on my own. I've now taken some steps to educate myself. I'm a certified life coach and I'm becoming a yoga teacher and I, I run a, um, a wellness platform uh, with a good friend of mine um, that's now a YouTube channel. And, um, and it's just taking it, what I've learned and what, what I feel like um, any knowledge I've been able to garner is I want to give it to anybody who needs it. So welcome today and I'm so excited to hear from these amazing people. All right. Thanks, Natalia. I am going to jump into the questions. We had at least nine questions submitted, and then I know that there might be more coming in. So there, our first question for our panelists uh, is this one. Is balance possible if you want a sex successful career? I feel like it's all changed through the pandemic. Priorities have shifted. I just want to make good art and support my community and have time to love my people and focus on home. Is there a space for those things to exist together? And if so, can I still expect my art to put money in my bank account? <laughs> so that's the question. I'm gonna put the main part of it in the chat. And yeah, whoever wants to ju jump in first. I feel like Darlene, you had such a cool, when we were talking about this question, you had such a cool entry into it. So I would love to hear that again. I did. <laughs> you did. You asked a question. Do you remember what it was? Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Thank you. You're right. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the first question around uh, around, you know, success is is I think we have to ask ourselves what what success looks like to us. Um, and, and and I think a lot of people have self included, you know, I think everyone's gone through some soul searching over this last year, right at home and, and um, and maybe we've rediscovered some things that are really important to us that maybe weren't getting the time, right? And so I think first off is to think about what success really looks like to you. What are the things that are important to you? How do you want your life to feel rather than trying to put a name or a, or a task to it? But um, for me, what has really worked really well in the past when I trying to navigate a way forward is to is to kind of sit and think about those things which are really important to me and think about what I want my career and my life to feel like rather than to try to define what it is and I use that as a touchstone when I'm trying to make decisions moving forward um, about how I'm going to spend my time um, what else I feel like you would have a lot here, Natalia, honestly. I mean, um, but I don't think there's any one path forward for that, you know, and, and it's, and there's no requisite, you know, kind of musician lifestyle. I know we've, we've kind of been led to believe that, but I feel like we're in a place now where we have the opportunity to have a different conversation. Um, and everyone's in a place to have a different conversation. So I kind of liken it to um, when you start a new job, like you want to like, you know, kind of do your terms up front with your new employer. And I feel like we're kind of all going into a situation where we're going back into the same industry, but it's very, we don't know what it's going to look like. Right. And, um, and some of it might be familiar and other parts of it might not be. Um, so I think we have an opportunity to have a conversation about what success looks like and what balance looks like and, and ask for it up front, you know, and really be candid with your team um about about what your needs are so it sounds like if we look at the question it, i think your answer is yes because the they asked i just want to make art and support my community and have time to love and focus is is there space for those things to exist together and what i heard you say is yeah you just kind of have to dedicate some time and thought and practice to it Defi define what the important elements are right. for you because there's no one way and how then, about and any then, of the uh, oh sorry <laughs> i know i'm going to be talking over all of you so i'm just gonna apologize in, a, in a, right now <laughs> so it's, it's a thing I, I need to work on but do our other speak panelists chioma or natalia would y'all like to chime in uh, yeah so, so like darlene said it's about figuring out what it is that you value, right? Putting down on paper what your top three values are 
and organizing and prioritizing your life around that, knowing that these are the things that I prioritize in my life. And so decisions I make are going to be based off of these things. Is it getting me towards this goal that I have? Or is it taking me further away from that? Because it's really important that we save space for the things that matter to us, right? So we're spending, so if you write down on a calendar exactly what how you spend your days and how you spend your time, it gives you a good idea of why we don't feel that balance because sometimes our priorities aren't getting as much time as we want it to. And so then looking at your calendar and looking at what we're doing and how we're prioritizing our time now and how we would like to, and then making those shifts. It's not going to be easy, right? Because sometimes there are obligations and things that we have to do, mm-hmm. but recognizing when we when we need to say no to help benefit our future self, right? So our future self will be like, thanks for saying that no, instead of saying that yes when we should have definitely said no, because we didn't have that time. We didn't have, like, we didn't have that space. And so making sure that you save space for yourself, because at the end of the day, if you are completely torn apart, it doesn't, there is no time for anything that you enjoy. So making sure that each day and all the time, we're always prioritizing and saving space for ourselves. And so my answer is also yes, (laughs) you can. It is possible to find that balance. Thank you. And I like your suggestion to write things down. I, I mean, for me, that's super helpful to see it. I, I mean, I'm a visual learner or something, but yeah, it's definitely when you look at the, how your pie pieces are divided, you might be shocked or you might be pleased. So, <laughs> so. Uh, I think I wanted to add just um, something I'd heard years ago is the band Betty had an off Broadway show called Betty Rules for the, it ran for a long time. And at one point, they talk about measuring success, not with a ruler, but with a slinky. That there's this effect, you know, as especially as independent musicians. Um, and I guess just at one point, I what a great, first of all, just to acknowledge that it's a great place to be in, to be able to even ask those questions. You know, what, what do you want? What's your impact in the world? Um, it's a beautiful thing to be in that place in your art making life and I think the the no is so powerful and getting to the, you know, early when you're so hungry and also a lot of energy, you're like, yes, before you even, before they've even finished saying, you know, well, we have a bag of chips and uh, this couch that you can sleep on in backstage. Um, so I started asking some questions to myself. Was it professionally, personally, spiritually, or financially um, beneficial to me? And two out of four of those had to be present. I now need all of those and I would just proffer one more question that I want to make good art like what is good art if it's not supporting your community and supporting yourself so to be in the place of flipping that question back what does that even mean um, I, don't, I don't think it's possible as Chioma's saying you know if, we, if you don't put your oxygen mask on first you got nothing left so um, whatever your the art you're making is only going to benefit from you being um benefited by it Mm. yeah i really like how you saw that other question that's cool um thank you i think i'm going to jump into our next question because there are so many good ones the next one is i'd love to hear about strategies for when your hobby is your work for example i have trouble disconnecting or taking time off because everything i do revolves around music or the music business Even when I watch a movie, I'm thinking about the soundtrack and the sync placements. It's like an addiction. I find myself leaning on alcohol just to turn all of that off sometimes, but it doesn't work. So the question I hear is, I'd love to hear about strategies for when your hobby is your work. So I'm gonna paste that. So any thoughts? I guess I would just say my first response is sort of like, yeah, me too. I mean, I don't really know what the problem is, honestly. Um, to turn off that mental chatter and not to, to not be able to enjoy going to see and experience music is, that's crappy. And that's some stuff you got to sit with, like, what's going on? What's that, that compare despair thing? Um, maybe you're going to see the wrong music. Uh, but I, I honestly... I get the question and I guess as somebody who maybe, I don't want to say suffers from that, but my life is my art, my work is my art, as is, is my life. I don't, um, I don't know the difference and I don't know that it has to be good or bad. Like, um, 
I'm learning though. My my partner is teaching me to just like lay down sometimes, and <laughs> I think uh you know napping and things like this are not. This is not. I'm also a New York Jew. I just grew up with this like gotta go, gotta go, gotta go thing all the time, and um. So I'm learning. So I'm gonna maybe mute in a second because my dog's barking. But um, I I think to to see that as a problem maybe is the problem. Um, I think there's a way that you can enjoy all of it more right. and take that discerning mind of the, your critic and maybe find a way to enjoy that experience. Like, huh? What would I do differently? Or what is that? What's happening here that's making me? what's getting sticky for me. So just maybe mm -hmm. take a moment on that. Yeah. And I didn't type in the whole, I mean, part of what I left out and what I wrote, like they felt like it was almost an addiction and you're saying maybe, is that a problem? Like if they were at, they were at, they're experiencing a different type of art, which was film. And then they were, couldn't stop turning off the music and like either. I think that's called being an artist. Okay. Um, I don't turn it off. <laughs> it's just on. I mean, it's like I watched Queen's Gambit. Like that's just that first episode and she's staring at the ceiling and seeing it. And I was like, yeah, that's like, why is that interesting? I just thought I and I turned that off because I thought I'd rather be making my own thing and staring at my own ceiling. Um, I, I don't I don't. Yeah, I'd like to hear from more um, better experts on this topic because I don't I don't see it as a problem. The drinking maybe. You know, I get that because that's part of that. Um, uh, they might be using that to treat like the the anxiety, the chatter, anxiety, anxiety. Or something. So yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And also because it is such a part of the music world. The music scene. For yeah, sure. absolutely. And um, that's that's certainly. I think if you're asking those questions of yourself, it's it's good to just notice. Sit with them. Yeah. Would anyone else like to chime in? And we don't have to. We don't have to have every person answer every question. I, I, I've, just got a, I've just got a couple of thoughts to add. First of all, I want to say that I really relate to that, and uh, and I don't know if this person is an artist or if they're if they're on the um on you know, on the industry side, but but I know that I, I had this issue as well when I was doing record promotion, and you know, and I was out there trying to get airplay for artists all the time. If I was listening to the radio. And, and, you know, a, a song was getting a whole lot of airplay and maybe the whatever artist I was working with wasn't I was, you know, there, you get into this like kind of FOMO or this comparison mode sometimes. Um, and um, or at least that's how I experienced it. It's like, oh, man, how did they get that done? You know, and maybe maybe that's what this person is experiencing is um, is, is a comparison or you know, oh my gosh, you know, how did they land that scene? Yeah, how did they get or that song or something, you know? And I, so I can kind of understand that. And, and what works for me, and I know I'm going back to paper again, this sounds so old school, but the way that the two tools that have been helpful for me to sort of, especially working, I've worked at home for 20 plus years, you know, so pandemic wasn't my first rodeo with that. Um, and you almost have to create sort of some separation. So two things. Um, paper works well for me to get the thought out of my head, right? Because <clears throat> sometimes if if I if I pick up this thing, I'm down a rabbit hole. You know, it's like if I pick that up to do a voice record for myself or send an email or whatever tool, put it in Google Drive, then the next thing I'm like, oh, well, let me just check my email while I'm here. Let me just check my Instagram. And then, you know, you're just off. Right. So I literally keep a notebook on my coffee table in my living room that if some of these things come up while I'm just trying to have my leisure time, that I can just jot it down. Because what keeps my mind at least going chattering on this stuff is that I might forget to follow up on it. I might forget to do the research that I'm like suddenly wanting to do on this. So I'll just kind of jot it down. And then that way it's out of my head. I know I'm not gonna forget about it. And it's just, it's there waiting for me in the morning. So that's one thing. Um, if phones, if, if using technology works for you, absolutely use it. For, for myself and for most people that I know, it ends up being another, another trigger to like, oh, here's another thing I wanna look up and think about, you know? Um, and also just um, 
as far as the alcohol goes, I will mention, and I can't absolutely can't do this without talking to someone and doing a consultation and, and making sure it's right. But but there there are certainly things in um, in my herbal apothecary that are like really significantly uh, they, they work really well for quieting mind chatter um, specifically. Um, and so that might be something that might be helpful as well. And then I think just creating a ritual like that says. The day is the, the work day is done. Um, there's nothing on fire. And there's no emergency. If something comes up, I can write it on my notebook. Um, but creating some sort of a ritual to separate the work day from the rest of the day into family time or whatever you know your personal situation is. Take a bath. Take a walk. You know, have a dance off in your living room. Whatever it is, to just kind of shake it up and change the vibe, you know, so that you can move into now. I'm in personal time. Gotcha. Thank you. Both of those were great. Um, Chioma, any words or yeah. shall I go to the next question? Yeah. So just to piggyback a little bit on what Darlene is saying, I think it's really important that in terms of like recognizing what does downtime look like and what is it that you're trying to accomplish, right? Because what is that like that looks different for everybody and acknowledging that like sometimes our thought of like completely blanking everything out of our mind isn't always possible. And so recognizing to acknowledge the thought, but then not like trying to stop yourself from thinking the thought, but more so just being like, okay, I hear you, but we're not going to acknowledge that right now. We're going to like stay present in this moment and not allow yourself to go through that. And then you're like second guessing yourself. And then you're like, why do I keep thinking about this? And then you end up down this rabbit hole of negative thoughts and negative like self-talk and all these things. And so rather than being so hard on yourself, giving yourself grace and recognizing like, yes, my music is my passion. This is my life. Music is everywhere. And so we can't really get away from it unless we turn everything off, which is also an option, right? Going for a run, going outside, doing things that don't involve music is an option. But if that isn't just giving yourself grace during those times and being like, it's okay, I'm gonna stay present. It's okay, <laughs> but I'm going to stay present and just keep practicing that. and over over time, it'll become easier. And so just trying to stay present would be my take on how to help eliminate some of that anxiety and things about constantly thinking about it and struggling with trying to get it out of your mind because we can't outthink our anxiety. It's not, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, why did you have to say that? No. <laughs> no, that's actually a really good reminder for me and I think for probably all of us. So. Thanks y'all, that was really helpful for that um, question. I'm gonna move on to the question, another question. Um, and again, just for the audience and attendees, please feel free to offer your thoughts. I'm gonna try to write question and your own thoughts about questions as they're presented, because I think everyone has something to offer and to share. So the next one I'm gonna read is, um, what is the best thing you recommend for maintaining creativity while helping a loved one through serious illness? So what is the best thing you recommend for maintaining creativity while, maintain, while helping a loved one through an illness? Um, I'm not, I'm not, anyone? <laughs> I could chime in, but y'all, y'all should. I, I feel like you're so uniquely qualified actually to respond to this question, even though I know that you're the moderator. Um, this is going to be the most cliche answer in the world, but it's your own self care, you know, because, um, and I, and I've, and I've walked this road and I know that it's very difficult and, um, it's like, almost like tear up to saying it, but it's hard. I mean, it's really hard. And, um, so first of all, give yourself a break and acknowledge that it's really hard and it would be for anyone. Um, the but, care it, give. but yeah. it's, the care give is very difficult, um, to see, to, to experience your loved ones going through a difficult time is, is very, very difficult. Your own self-care is so incredibly important because you cannot draw from an empty well. Uh, you cannot take care of them if you're not taking care of yourself. And also they don't want that. They don't want to be a burden upon you. They, they want to see you do well. Um, I would also say um, actively, um, actively working through the process of grieving because even when someone is with us when they're sick we're still grieving 
with and for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, whether that is going to therapy, whether that is, um, you know, a movement practice or utilizing herbs and nutrition or all of those things, Um, but definitely time. If it's only 20 minutes just to go sit outside in the sunshine every day, please do that for yourself Um, because they need you but they can't, you know, you can't take care of them if you're falling apart yourself. Um, and if you're taking care of yourself, your creativity will be there. Um, Thank you, darling. I, do, I think you have much to offer <laughs> here because of your hospice work. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll go at some point, but yeah, and Natalia, Chioma, do y'all have thoughts? Yeah, I would say all of that. And, you know, if if there's a practice that you, um, want to keep a journal of your experience actually it's it's so hard to be when you're so in it um but as someone currently in i'm in that state right now my mom has alzheimer's and it's partly why i moved up to the hudson valley and um i don't i have my own creative practices but i do keep a little bit and it's not like a daily thing but i check in to this document that i'm keeping to just keep track um and another friend of mine who who also went through this same experience just said, when you're tired, when your body's tired, sleep <laughs> is the most important thing. It's so regenerative. And um, I just, I can't say it enough to just be kind to yourself as well mm-hmm. through it. And especially with, if there's cognitive things, it's the longest, they say it's the longest death process. It's the, it's a mourning that takes, takes all mm-hmm. kinds of form. So um yeah, being aware of that. Thank you, actually, Darlene, for the reminder of that, that it's stages of this of this grief that, um, you know, we don't look on kindly in our culture. And to, to acknowledge that you're in it, um, make space for that and make art out of that. Mm. And next week's session is actually um, called Good Grief. So we'll be kind of delving into this deeper. And it's, you can find it on the Folk Alliance webinar uh, website specific to webinars. <laughs> but um um chioma did you have it words yeah i don't really have much to add they covered so just to echo like just remembering that as we're grieving that the grief process is not linear right it's not like you check off each stage and then you're like okay i should be i should be done now that's not how grieving works and so just giving yourself grace and giving yourself permission to just be and it's okay and just recognizing that piece of that Thank you. And in the, in the serious illness, it may not even be an end of life. It might be um, supporting someone who is, um, cl- cl- you know, cl- clinically depressed or has a mental health issue. So, but all of those, I think, you know, to maintain your creativity, I think you guys have given the best advice. So <laughs> just keep, keeping up your own self-care is so important. And one of you kind of touched on the next question. So um, I'm going to type it in. There it is. But <laughs> so what are some tips for going to bed early when the quiet of the nighttime is so great for creating and catching up on things? What are your tips? <laughs> I'm a night owl. So I get the, I did not write this question, but I get this person. <laughs> I would say the quiet and stillness of the morning is equally as wonderful as the quiet of the night. Um, and I don't have small children though, so I, I don't know, but I, I am a morning person. And after years of being on the road pretty constantly, I didn't know that. Um, and so it takes not being, um, in that space to anytime I got off the road, I would quickly, my system would go back to, uh, a circadian rhythm of waking up earlier. And I've, I've really cultivated that actually. Um, but I say, you know, setting a timer probably if you're if you're going to get late into the night of knowing you need a certain amount of sleep, um, making sure that you get that. So stopping and turning off all the devices way earlier and giving yourself a, those rituals that were mentioned, you know, take a bath or do something to just be done with it. But um, I recommend the morning. <laughs> I love I put in the chat I love both I love waking up before the sun rises and seeing it and I I don't know I guess I could like just sleep in the middle of the day and then I could have both <laughs> but yeah I think you're 
cutting off technology is a really important part. There's so much research and science out about that, you know, that um, to have it a specific amount of time, you can decide what it is. But how about our other panelists? Thoughts on the tips for going to bed early? I was going to say early mornings as well. I too am an early riser, not by choice. I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning without an alarm, which is very frustrating when you want to sleep in, <laughs> especially, but having early mornings and having a routine helps also. If you have a good morning routine, it can lead into a good night routine that then leads back into a good morning routine. So setting up a routine and those rituals are really important in order to maintain that kind of schedule because humans are creatures of habit. And so if we're able to create this structure around something, it can help us feel more stable and more present in ourselves. And so just having space in the morning, because the morning time is really quiet. It's really it's like everybody is sleeping. It's like a different kind of quiet than at night is what I've learned. But I am not very good at staying up past nine. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not very good at night time. <laughs> But I've learned that when I did stay up past nine, that the quiet is quiet, but the morning quiet is just like you can hear the things waking up and you can hear the day beginning, you can hear the birds and all those other things happening in the morning time. That's pretty amazing. So set like in terms of getting a routine at night, like Natalia said, turning off your electronic devices because your brain will continue to process it an hour after you fall asleep. And so even if you fall asleep, the quality of sleep isn't as good. So the next day you're still pretty tired. So just remembering to shut things down so your brain is able to shut down as well. I saw some advice in the chat too. Um, books, books are a good way for yeah, books are Jared. Good. <laughs> I, uh, I was just, I, I was going to speak about the morning as well, but I, I will say I am not a morning person, never have been a morning person. Um, I'm trying to be a morning person. Um, but, you know, without knowing kind of more about the individual's specific circumstances, um, you know, first of all, it's like, is, is that schedule working for you? Maybe it is. I mean, there's not, there's, if, if the late night schedule is working for you, that's okay. Um, uh, if there's a reason why you need to flip that schedule, then, then one thing that, that I agree with everything that was said, one thing I might add is that you can start to do that incrementally. So say you usually go to bed at two, three in the morning, we'll bump it back a half an hour, you know, like just, just, just do it over some weeks um, and then adjust on the flip side of getting up, you know, a half an hour earlier and just give your body an opportunity to adjust to that, to that new schedule. Um, and, and, and definitely turn down the lights, turn off the technology, like everybody said. And, um, and, and, uh, and I would recommend a really nice cup of herbal tea to help you sleep. Um, you know, the, there's obviously lots of ones that are, people are familiar with already, you know, nice gentle ones like chamomile, um, or, uh, you know, skullcap is a really nice herb for people who, who can't sleep if their minds go in too much, um, or golden milk, which most people know, you know, is, 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 uh, helpful to also kind of help fall asleep. And then there's other things that would be more specific to very, very specific situations, but those are ones or passion flower that could be really, I could say, you know, generally regarded for say for most people um, as, as a way to sort of just start to help getting yourself in that space to be able to sleep. Thanks everybody. I'm gonna jump because so many good questions. All right, next question. Our next folk life balance question. What are the strategies for dealing with highs and lows around performance and post-performance? So, I like how everyone kind of sees folk life balance in their own life experience. I mean, I don't know who, I didn't see who submitted this, but I'm assuming it's an artist. So yeah, I know that there's a lot of um, personal identity tied up into performance being received. And then I can only imagine about the posts, the highs and the lows. So any thoughts? I mean, Natalia, you are the one artist on the, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, I would say, you know, uh, there's so many ways I'm thinking about that question. Is it, you know, the, the, the time you spend thinking about the things you did or didn't do um, as a performer, but, you know, when you're doing it 
a lot, it's so great because if something went weird, it doesn't really matter because you're going to do it tomorrow night. That's the one beautiful thing about the temporal arts is it exists in this time and then it's done. You know, the internet has made it a little harder to hide behind um, your errors and flubs because that's what uh, me personally, I will torture myself for a long time about something that, um, not necessarily something I did musically weird, but if I said something weird on stage, which then happens. Um, but I would say, you know, just the highs, the high itself. I used to actually have a practice of um, putting something in my pocket to say, okay, this is now performer me. And I would do that and take it out of my pocket. And it was time to be me again, because especially in the folk tradition, it's you, you don't even necessarily change your clothes. You get out of the car and you, that's sort of the way it's supposed to look, you know, so to actually take more time to, to um, become the performer self is, mm. is really helpful. That delineation that it's not you on stage. It's you, you have a persona and you may be telling stories about your life and however telling your music may be, um, that it's, it's, there's a difference. And so taking a moment to also come back to self, um, some deep breathing before and after, and really be back in your, you are in your body, but you, you leave in the, in the most beautiful, precious way that we all miss so much. You can't do that by singing into your computer. So I can't, I'm, but I'm remembering even talking about it that, um, oh yeah, that ethereal space that we just created. I just want to exist in there. So coming back um yeah. i really love that rich that what you did you had something to separate your performer self and then your reg regular self <laughs> yeah and you know for years i felt like i wasn't even allowed to put makeup on like i was supposed to just be you show up as you it was the that's the folk tradition and it was actually some some of the elders in our world thankfully helping me saying you know on stage in jeans is not necessarily uh, the greatest. If It depends on what kind of music you're playing and what the venue is. But take a moment to care because these people paid money and they're looking at you. Um, and so, you know, you, you can find your own balance with that, of course. And, and everybody has their own thing. But that has helped me, actually, to not, you know, I don't show up in taffeta. I'm not an opera singer. My sister's an opera singer. And she said she chose the profession for the wardrobe. Like that would kill me if I had to do that. But some difference, like actually in my yoga teacher training, one of the things the teacher was saying, and Jomi can tell me if, if this is true for you or not, but depending on your ability financially, if you have a clothes you can wear for your pr practice and clothes you can wear as a teacher or something, like put on a pair of earrings when you're teaching and not when you're practicing, there's a there's a little bit of a difference. And that, that really resonated with me because I thought, I, I've worn this on stage for sure, but um, <laughs> maybe I, I, I will retire it. I don't know. Good support system. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think having just me thinking I'm a booking agent. I have artists I work with. So, yeah, I think that if you have your support system, that's a, the best way to deal with the highs and the lows. You know, there's somebody who gets you, who loves you, who supports you, someone who you can call after your performance if you need to process that. I mean, that's kind of my thoughts about it and advice. Oh, and other performers, Laura, you, maybe you knew about this, but um, uh, Matt and I used to have a crappy gig hotline with a couple of other people. Matt, no, I haven't oh, heard about that. We, we, <laughs> thankfully, none of us have called it in years, but we used to call it and leave a message and be like, you're never going to believe what, like, the – promoter did at the end of the night blah 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 it was so fun and everybody had the same experience hysterical. yeah having that support system of other performers too who like get it on every level I, i'm gonna jump to our next question because i think it's so important it might be our last one because i think there'll be a lot of conversation around it and everyone please stay on the call i mean the the call the zoom <laughs> because at the end of our session we're gonna have a little special slideshow presentation but here's the long version of the question, and I'll write the condensed one in the chat in a moment. But it said, this person wrote, with any luck, we're about to embark on a huge transitional period, but it could be bumpy. For many musicians, there's bound to be some reckoning going on as we recalibrate our lives again. 
If you went from years of wild and woolly travels, collaborations, performances, and feeding off fans and peers in this never ending whirlpool of socializing to then having to spend a year plus locked away in seclusion, only now to find ourselves with the opportunity and perhaps cautiously and gracefully jump back into some kind of requisite musician's lifestyle again. It may not be as easy as walking out the door. What can we do to prepare for this transition? So I summarized it there, but yeah, there's a different life pre pan uh, musicians and uh, the music industry world before the pandemic, and now there's going to be another one. So I think that this personally, I think this advice is probably going to be the same whether you're in the music industry or not, like, because all of us are having to re enter um, relationships and places and settings. So what can we do to prepare ourselves for this transition? It's a big one. There's no right or wrong answers. And other people, please chat, please chat um, in your, your thoughts as well in the chat. I'm gonna ask Chioma, do you wanna launch, launch us please? Pretty please. <laughs> sure, yeah. So yeah, COVID has definitely, been a whirlwind. It's been a time of a lot of isolation and seclusion, and there's been a lot of lack of social interaction. And so as we reintegrate back into society and back out with other people, um, depending, I mean, a lot of it is just going to be about being able to just recognize what your comfort level is and listening to yourself and your body and trusting yourself in your body because oftentimes we don't pay attention to the signs our body is giving us. And so it's really important that we tune into ourselves, tune into our body and recognize that there are gonna be some challenges and that's okay, right? There are gonna be things that come up and that's okay. And just knowing that everything comes has its time and everything also has its time that it goes, right? And so everything is technically temporary. <laughs> and so recognizing that although COVID has felt like 7.5 million years. At some point, it <laughs> will not be COVID, right? We will be in a land in which COVID is in the history books. And we're like, remember that time where we didn't touch people <laughs> and we didn't want anybody to touch us and we wouldn't touch anything <laughs> and nobody wanted to touch doorknobs. Remember those days? And so just recognizing that give yourself grace, give yourself permission, let yourself experience it however it shows up for you and that's okay and then if you're having a challenging time always reach out to somebody it's really important there's i know access to professionals is not always accessible right we therapists are tough to get in touch with and to book with and to schedule with we are not as accessible as we should be um we are all very aware of that and we are very aware of what that looks like. And so just recognizing that there are resources though out there if we are having a challenging time reintegrating and things like that. And if you need resources, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I know plenty of resources for lower cost free therapy services um, that I'm happy to share. Um, but yeah, but it's just been really very important to just listen to yourself, pay attention to what your body is telling you and just do whatever feels safe for you and your body. Um, we also, if Tressa, maybe you can post it. We also, if you're a musician, we have a link, a, a list of resources um, for getting support if you need it. So, oh, she already did it. Yeah, <laughs> so you can check out that link and be sure to save the chat. But um, we are, any more thoughts on that? The, how do we transition back post COVID because it's going to be bumpy. I, uh, I was, as I was listening to that question, you know, I kind of wanted to return to something we said earlier, which was having communication with your team about where you're at, you know, and um, 
whatever, if, whether that's your band or your management company or the, the record company you work for, or whatever, just having really open communications and knowing that you're not the only one feeling this way. Most everyone is feeling this way. I'm certainly feeling this way. Um, and I saw someone saying uh, in there that, you know, that they've never really been that comfortable being in, in, in crowds full of people drinking and stuff before and now, especially not. I think we have an opportunity to shift the dynamic if we're just being, you know, we don't have to go back to, we don't have to go back to normal. Like maybe we can go to something better than before um, and, and, and keep all the things that we love, but maybe we can make some adjustments about the things that weren't so incredibly healthy for us. Um, and I also think, you know, I, I know you and I talked about this on, on a sidebar conversation that we had, Laura, it's just like, I think, you know, energetic exchange is a real thing. And when you're, you know, when you're around people, you're exchanging energy with them. And maybe we're just now noticing what we were always experiencing because we got away from it for a little while. And so that self-awareness might be very useful. Um, and then, uh, you know, two more thoughts is, if there's something that you discovered during the course of the pandemic that was grounding to you, then try to find a practical way to keep that as part of your lifestyle on, you know, on the road or off. Um, and then a tool that, that I like to use, and maybe some of you have heard of this before, um, it's kind of a yogic pra practice, which is called heart breathing. Um, and I've been taught it a few different ways, but the most simple way, uh, which was recent, I was recently reminded by one of my teachers, is just, just simply to bring your consciousness to your heart when you're breathing. And imagine that you're breathing right into that space and breathe out the same way. You can do this anywhere you are. You can do it in the car, in the plane, wherever. Um, you know, try to do maybe a minimum of five times and just be in that presence because what that does is it drops you out of here into here and you're not spinning and you're fully present. And that ha it, it's, it's a remarkable, very simple practice that anyone can do that can just bring you back to presence um, when you might be feeling otherwise. So maybe take, take that's just a simple self-help tool that, that I recommend to a lot of people. And I've seen people just change like in the moment when they do it, like go from being very, spinning out to like see the smile come across their face you know where they just kind of drop into being in the present time thank you darlene and chioma i am going to wrap us up right now <laughs> i want to thank i'm so i apologize that we weren't able to get to all of the questions but um we tried our best to do that and Thank you for participating in the chat and to our panelists. Um, what we're going to do to close is that we're each of our, the panelists is going to have a one word or one sentence self-care tip. And then I am going to say a couple more things. So my self-care tip is movement. If I walk or stretch every day, I feel so much better. Next. <laughs> Darlene, you're next. One word, one sentence. Self-care tip. Wherever you might be, find the nearest green space and go sit in it, even if it's just the one tree outside the hotel for 20 minutes and put down your phone. Thank you. Natalia. Um, those were mine. Um, it can be the same. Water. <laughs> Drink a lot of water and breathe. A alternate nostril breathing is my favorite. Thank you. Well, then, Natalia, you took mine. <laughs> so I'm going to say, give yourself grace. Through everything, mistakes, things that go, go our way, just give yourself grace. And that's my self-care tip. But just give yourself grace. And yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you all. I want to share on the 2019 conference, we had a, this postcard that says folk life balance. And then you wrote a message to self and it says, write an encouraging note or a reminder to yourself and your intentions for self care. Folk Alliance will mail it to you in six months. We're not doing that, but I want you all, I want to encourage everyone who's still here and who watches this later, 
write your own self-care tip, and then check in with yourself in a few months. So thank you for all of our amazing panelists who've been here today. I appreciate all of you volunteering your time. And then I'm gonna turn it back to the staff. And then we still, we have a video presentation, which was also from the 2019 conference. Um, we, in addition to having these postcards, we had a wall where people wrote their self-care tips. So we're gonna share some photos of those. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And we're going to go out on the slideshow. Thank you, Laura, Chioma, Darlene, and Natalia. What a wonderful conversation. And thank you also to Bonnie for providing the captions. We will see you all next time. Stay safe and connected, community.